When you don't know what it is that you are treating, just start meropenem plus vancomycin and hope for the best, right? If you've done this, you are not alone, but is it the right thing to do? Well, most of the time, definitely no, because this is almost always either gigantic, toxic overkill, or you miss the mark completely. So let's see what to do instead. The main purpose of vancomycin is to cover MRSA. That's it. Okay, technically speaking, there are some exceptions, but 99% of the time it's about MRSA. So, is your patient at risk for MRSA? Have they been colonized or infected by MRSA sometime in the last 6 to 12 months? Have they recently been exposed to broad-spectrum antibiotics or hospitals? Is MRSA especially common in your area, ward, hospital? I explained all of this in a separate video about vancomycin specifically, but the point is, when deciding about adding vancomycin, the main question is, how likely is it that the cause of my patient's infection is MRSA? What about meropenem? Well, it doesn't cover MRSA, but it covers almost all bacteria that cause community-acquired infections. That includes a wide array of gram-negative bacteria, which includes almost all strains of E. coli and many other gram-negative rods. It also covers anaerobic bacteria very well and, unfortunately, it wreaks havoc on your patient's gut microbiome, which makes sense, doesn't it? Such a broad-spectrum antibiotic will destroy everything in the gut. The only bacteria that are left are the ones with very advanced resistance mechanisms. And once meropenem has wiped out everything else, these resistant bacteria are free to multiply and take over the niche. Which means that the next time your patient gets an infection, there is a significant chance that this infection will be caused by one of these multi-drug resistant bacteria. This is exactly what is happening in my country and in the rest of Southern and Eastern Europe and many other parts of the world. Bacteria that are resistant even to carbapenems, like meropenem, have flooded our hospitals. In some words, almost all hospital-acquired infections are now caused by carbapenem-resistant bacteria, which is a disaster. Overuse of carbapenems inevitably leads to this. Okay, now that we understand the problem, where does all of this leave us when we need to decide on antimicrobial therapy? Well, for community-acquired infections, meropenem plus vancomycin is almost always overkill. The only exception maybe is when the patient is in septic shock and we are not sure what the source of sepsis is. In medicine, we are always trying to choose the lesser evil, and in the case of septic shock, the lesser evil might be a too broad spectrum of antibiotics. The greater evil would be failing to cover the actual pathogen, which of course could be fatal in the case of septic shock. But with the exception of septic shock, for community-acquired infections, this combination is usually not indicated. If your patient is not in shock and there are no risk factors for MRSA, there is a high chance that your patient does not need vancomycin. For more detail, take a look at my video on vancomycin specifically. And regarding meropenem, again, for community-acquired infections, it's usually overkill. Once you figure out what kind of infection you are dealing with, pneumonia, UTI, a skin infection, most of the time, you can start treatment with a much narrower spectrum antibiotic, according to established guidelines. These antibiotics will be equally effective, if not more effective, than carbapenems, but they won't wipe out your patient's microbiome and they won't fuel dangerous levels of resistance. There will be exceptions, of course. There will be patients who were recently colonized or infected by resistant bacteria, and in those cases, you may have no other choice but to use carbapenems. But this is rare, fortunately. Again, most of the time, if you know what you are doing, you can go much narrower. And to master this, you don't need to be an infectious disease specialist. A few days of well-structured, clinically-oriented lessons are enough to get all you need. I explain this step by step in my online course on antibiotics. If you want to become proficient in using antibiotics in clinical practice and you want to do it quickly in a way that you won't forget it after two weeks, take a look at the free demo version of this course. The first few crucial lessons are unlocked. This will be more than enough for you to understand why this works so well and how you will apply it in practice. You will quickly get a feel for how effective this approach is and how different it is from anything you may have tried before. The link is in the description. Okay, so much about community-acquired infections. What about hospital-acquired infections? Well, 
that heavily depends on your local resistance patterns in your country, your hospital, even your specific ward. Without proper monitoring and without close cooperation with your microbiology department, you are flying blind. There is no way you can know what to cover. In today's era of rampant and extremely diverse antimicrobial resistance, there is no drug or drug combination that reliably covers all hospital-acquired bacteria. It simply doesn't exist. You have to know what's common in your ward, what your patient was recently exposed to, infected or colonized with, and base your decision on that. And just like I emphasized in the lecture on vancomycin, whenever you are treating a severe infection or you're about to use a broad empiric regimen, make sure to take high-quality microbiological samples beforehand. At the minimum, two sets of blood cultures plus other samples depending on the most likely source of infection. After a few days, you will know what bacterium you are dealing with or at least what you are not dealing with and you will adjust treatment accordingly. But if you fail to take these samples in time, you will not know what to do. Of course, this is essential for the patient you are treating right now, but also for the purpose of monitoring what kind of bacteria are common in your ward, so that you can choose a better empiric regimen in the future. There can be vast differences even between wards within the same hospital, not to mention entire countries. For example, in Northern and Western Europe, meropenem and vancomycin will often be massive overkill. But in hospitals in Southern and Eastern Europe, which are flooded with carbapenem resistant bacteria, this combination may completely miss the mark. And you might have to resort to antibiotics with an even broader spectrum than meropenem. It's scary, but this is the world we live in today. I explain how to deal with all of this and much more in my course. Again, you don't have to be an infectious diseases specialist. In fact, I assume that you are not. But if you encounter these kinds of infections in practice, what you'll learn in this course will be invaluable. You have to know these things. You will make better, defensible decisions even in high-stakes situations where the wrong antibiotic can be catastrophic. You will do a lot of good and my hope is that you will share this knowledge with your colleagues and make an even greater impact. Take a look at the course and I promise you, you will see what I mean right away. The link is right below this video. Take care.